Okay, so ever since I released my day in the life video, I've been getting so many questions about NUS Computer Science on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, you name it. I even got an email. Most of the time, I'm happy to reply you guys. But I'm not gonna lie, it's been a bit tiring lately because everyone asks me the same things. People seem to think I'm some NUS Computing Encyclopedia. I am not an NUS Computing Encyclopedia. No matter, this is going to be a video that answers all your queries about NUS Computing. Why should you listen to me? I don't know. You guys keep asking me these questions. Before I begin, I want to preface this and say that these things are based off my own research and experiences and may not be the definitive answer to your questions. I'll also say that a lot of these things can be found online and me asking you to google it is going to be a recurring theme you lazy f Now that's out of the way, let's get straight into it. What's the difference between courses in NUS computing? How can CS relate to real world, jobs and whatnot? There are four courses in computing and one that's a bit of a hybrid. Computer science, information systems, information security, business analytics and computer engineering. Computer science. This is the broadest course, you will have the most options. You will work on software like applications, uh, mobile apps, web apps. These things are software. You work on developing software and coming up with algorithms. I covered a bit of it in my old video. Most become software engineers but you can also be more specific like an AI engineer, uh, some machine learning engineer, I don't know, test engineer, game developer, 3D animator. You don't even need to limit yourself to software stuff. The course simply teaches you knowledge and how you use that knowledge is up to you. Take this if you would like to create applications like your phone applications and whatnot. Information systems. IS is all about designing, implementing and managing information technology. This is from the NUS IS website. From what I know, IS is more focused on the system that goes behind how the tech industry works instead of the on the ground software work that normal computer science undergraduates would do. You'll be more aligned and will work more with the business needs of an organization. From what my IS friend told me, it's more on product management work. PM work is more for generalists rather than specialists. An example of a specialist is a software engineer and a UX designer. Take this if you want to be in the tech industry but you don't want to always be doing the on-the-ground programming work. You'll be doing things like management and other stuff as well. Information security. From the NUS website, InfoSec is all about keeping computer systems safe. You'll learn how to identify vulnerabilities in the systems, develop security protocols and respond to attempted breaches. So this is sort of a no-brainer. If you want to learn about hacking and preventing that, this course is for you. Business analytics. You'll be learning how to make sense of all the data you see from web analytics and accounting to market research and demographics. You'll learn how to work with spreadsheets, aggregate data, determine statistics statistical trends and more. Basically, in the future, you'll most likely become a data analyst. If you like data, this is for you. Computer engineering. In CG, you're going to be working more on hardware. So things like processors, motherboards, digital electronics that make computing possible. You will still be doing some programming related work. But I believe that it's more focused on the electronics and hardware. What do I do before joining NUS CS? What do I prep before CS? First up, go take a functional programming course in JS. You're going to be touching a bit on functional programming in your basic CS module. Or a Python course if you're taking CS then then. You can find these courses on like Udemy and whatnot. Just find the top rated course or something. If that's too hard for you, try Code Academy. It's more of like filling in the blanks, so it might not actually be that effective. It's okay to spend a bit of money on an online course, which would potentially make your life a lot easier from the start. If you really don't want to spend that money, go to w3schools.com, click on Java, go through everything from tutorial to methods, take down notes, and really try to understand. The goal here is not about learning syntax, which is the grammar of the programming language, but more of building intuitiveness in computational thinking. Basically, know how a computer thinks and reacts when it sees code. Don't be intimidated. A computer is stupid. It just works through instructions. The key is learning how to instruct it. It's not too tough to understand, but it will be a relatively steep learning curve. Secondly, make sure you maintain self-discipline and complete what you set out to do for the day. In uni, nothing is going to be spoon-fed to you. So chances are you're going to be on these websites a lot anyway. This is very, very important and I learned the hard way. Notes and assignments will have to be downloaded on your own and no one's really going to warn you to submit them on time. Besides a random email or announcement, practice this self-discipline and independence. Lastly, have a proper note-taking system before you enter uni. Don't flow around writing notes and then typing them into your computer. It's gonna waste a lot of time. I personally use Notion and I used to use OneNote as well. Okay, the nature of computing modules is that it's not exactly content heavy where you have to take like a ton of notes and write them down. It's really more about trying to understand how the concepts work. How do you organize your modules? What I did was that I created this Google Sheet and I planned around it. Generally, most students will take 5 modules or 20 modular credits per semester. You do the math. Most modules are around 4 MCs. I only need to complete 160 MCs across 8 semesters. So that's 20 MCs per semester. I planned it out by systematically clearing things that needed to be cleared like core modules and GE modules. I then left most of the back for my
my unrestricted electives because in CS we have like eight modules worth of UEs. The open-ended CS modules were also left at the back. My year one and year two was really really painful because I was clearing all these core modules which I didn't really have much interest in. Me thinking the core modules are boring doesn't mean I think they are not useful. And modules like IS1103 and MA1521 are also considered core modules which I thought was absolutely boring and useless to me. Just clearing that up. I suggest that in every semester you have at least one module that's a bit more slack. It's the module that will give you some breathing room in computing because CS modules tend to be pretty heavy. So examples of slacker modules are things like your GE modules and your UE modules depending on what you take. Do you learn a lot about hacking? No. I've not learned a single thing about hacking in computer science. I know a lot of you may think that computer science is something like this. But it's really like this. If you want to do hacking, you probably touched on this in information security or if you take computer security as a focus area. And contrary to its name, you don't hack stuff in hackathons. At least not all the time. It depends on what the hackathon is about, which is most likely to create an application or a game or something. How hard is it to get into NUS CS? How do I enter NUS CS? CS NUS is very tough to get in. You basically need to be top scorers in A levels, be it whether it's the Singapore Cambridge version or anything else. Poly graduates also need to attain a high GPA. Please refer to the NUS IGP profile, which can be found online. Screen shop for you lazy bum holes. As to how I entered in US Computer Science, I took the Singapore Cambridge A levels in Singapore. I got AAB, AAB, which constitutes to 86.25 rank points, and it was enough for me to get into the computer science program in NUS without having to appeal. The maximum for most courses is 3 H2As and 1 H1A, which assumes 2 H1Cs. This would mean a max of 85 rank points. I don't remember doing a personal essay, and I definitely didn't go for an interview as well. As far as I'm concerned, if you hit the cutoff, that's all you need. Do you need programming experience? No, I didn't have programming experience at all. It's just gonna be more painful for you in the beginning because of the steep learning curve. Would I be able to handle computer science with a minor? If it's a minor, it shouldn't be a problem. It's basically business as usual. A minor only requires you to take a few modules which will be covered in your UEs, aka your free to use modules in NUS. So you don't actually have to take extra modules which is more than what your course requires. What's the curriculum like in NUS computing? Go google it and it'll be the first result. NUS computer science curriculum. There's also curriculums online for the other NUS computing courses. How do I make friends in NUS computing if I didn't go for camps? Is it hard to make friends in NUS? How is making friends now that everything is online. It's not hard, but it's not like how it was back in high school. You actually will have to put in some effort. The thing about making friends back then, it's always a result of circumstance. You had no choice but to mingle with your classmates because you're going to be sticking with them for the next few years. That's why it's easy, because you literally see them all the time. In Singaporean colleges, that's going to be different. In NUS, and I believe NTU and SMU, there's no class system. You as a student choose what modules you want, and because of that, there's no fixed class system where you always be in the same schoolmates in the same classes. Think of modules as subjects, and there are literally thousands thousands of subjects in NUS. There will definitely be familiar faces here and there, but there's not going to be a fixed class over your 4 years of NUS computer science. But that's fine, because there are so many other ways to make friends. One thing you can try to do is to join an interest group. There are so many interest groups in NUS, and the good thing about it is that you're joining it with a shared interest with the other students. I myself have made many friends from interest groups. If you're going to be staying in student accommodation, that's going to be easy as well. You're literally living with these people around you, so just go around and mingle. If you're bound to online, just put yourself out there and talk to people. I've actually made friends with some students purely through online and I never even met them in real life before. For example, if your project work and you vibe with your group mates, just continue talking to them. I don't know, like drop a meme in the chat from time to time for some hahas. Maybe drop them a DM asking a question about the module before trying to talk about other things. How much free time do NUS CS students have? It's all a matter of priority. What is your priority? You can have all the free time in the world if you don't go for tutorials and lectures and don't study. No one's stopping you. You're free to do whatever you want in uni. Let's say you want to be an average scorer in NUS computing. You're probably going to have to put in a decent amount of work into school and study. I'm fairly confident that the workload in CS is higher than the average course. If you mean free time, like free time for Netflix and whatnot, you're not going to be slogging away for 16 hours a day for 4 years in CS. It's not that brutal. A lot of us keep showing this triangle and you've probably seen it as well, but it still does hold pretty well amongst most of the people I know so far. Most commonly used OS, <laughs> because not all of us are loaded, I'm pretty sure Windows is the dominant OS followed by Mac OS and then Ubuntu. There's no real preference, but some modules may require you to utilize Ubuntu. 
Ubuntu, like CS2106. But don't worry, because there are like computers in school for that. As for programming wise, I believe it's a lot easier for Mac users to download dependencies and technologies that may be required. You can simply just head over to terminal and punch in a few commands and that's about it. Windows on the other hand, you have to go through this huge slog of downloading for the website itself. And downloading and installing all these technologies is a huge pain and eats out a lot of my computer's internal storage. Does A-level computing give you better odds? I have no idea. If you missed their cutoff and had to appeal, I think that it might give you an edge. As far as I'm concerned, as long as you meet the basic criteria and rank points, you're in. And if you don't, then you won't be in. If someone has no passion for CS enter CS, will he or she be able to cope? You might or you might not. It depends on how smart you are. But the overarching theme here is going to be this. You're going to be miserable for 4 years, assuming you go through the whole thing. And that's reason enough to not do it if you don't have the passion. Don't try to be gung-ho and think like, yeah, I don't like it, but it pays well. Money isn't everything. You make a bit more money than others, but at what cost? Your mental health? Your happiness? Imagine earning all that money and then not having the mood or time to spend it. Don't do it if your focus is purely money. There's a lot of ways to make money than just one active job. It's just doing your research on what income streams are available to you. Case in point, me and YouTube. I'm not gonna lie. YouTube is an income stream that I myself am trying to build. But that's a video for another time. Is computing saturated? In my opinion, yes. Somehow a lot of people suddenly want to become software engineers and throw their life away. I'm kidding. But I do believe that a lot of people are diving into the hype and the high starting pay. Basically, a lot of them do not know what they are signing up for. Do check out my older video where I detail what you can come to expect in NUSCS. How differently do poly and JC students cope in NUSCS? Poly students might be able to cope with the independence of college better than that of JC students. I think college uses a similar module system as polytechnics. You're also required to do like 5 less modules in NUS computing and you're not so pressured to complete your degree on time. You can afford to spread out your academic plan a little bit more. I think poly students might struggle a bit with more technical modules like physics or math because it's something which you may not have learned in poly. GC students in computer science would likely have taken uh, physics and math and the required modules you have to take for math and physics covers some of the basics that you already learned in JC. But this only constitutes basic core modules so in the long run it really doesn't matter. We all suffer. How strict is the math requirement for SOC and CS? Please refer to this link over here. It says that you only need a H2 pass in computing or math or physics or good pass in H1 math. You probably just need to pass but I think considering the nature of the competition the least you should get is a B. What's the difference between lectures and tutorials? Lectures are basically seminar like sessions with lots of students. Think one big auditorium filled with students and only one professor talking. Lectures are meant to dump content onto you. Most of the time you get your first exposure to the module content in lectures. Tutorials are smaller classroom like sessions for you to internalize that information. This will be done through assignments and tutorial questions which you would prepare answers for before going to the lesson. There'll be a teaching assistant that will conduct these tutorial sessions. Think of it like a teacher except the teacher is like a senior or, or a PhD student. Additionally in CS you might have these things called labs. Lab sessions are mostly for you to practice actual programming based on the concepts that were taught. They are sessions for you to actually apply the content you learned. Labs may also have programming assignments as well. What are important skills you need to do CS in NUS? Honestly a lot of things but I'll just touch on these two which I feel are most important. Number one problem solving skills. When you're given a programming problem chances are in the future you are not going to be given a guide as to how to solve that particular problem. There's literally hundreds of ways to solve that problem through coding and, but you yourself would have to come up with the way to solve that problem. Number two, being a self-directed learner. If you join in CS and NUS, you'll come to realize that a lot of things that are covered by modules will not be enough. You have to do your digging on Google on top of the content they taught you in school. You really really need to take charge of your own learning and go find these explanations and knowledge online. I've said it before, a lot of the things needed in the real industry will not be taught in school and it's up to you to learn that on your own. And that is it for part one of answering your NUS computing questions. Part 2 will be covering more general NUS based questions as well as some questions for international students. I'll try to get the next video out by the next day. Do leave a like, share and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.